negative uh, integral kq over big R cubed R. Now this part here is, uh, is uh, constant, so I can factor it out. Integral of that is going to be r squared over 2 from little r to big R. Then I put the limits again. But this one is going to, the negative sign here is going to change the limit. So I'm going to uh, go like this. Uh, it's going to be uh, r squared over 2 minus big R squared over 2. And now my goal is to solve for v sub r. So bring everything to this side, take the v sub r to that side. And multiply this in. So I'm going to take this to the other side, all right? And then it'll be negative kq over r cubed, r squared over 2 minus r squared over 2. Now, put in. What is the potential at the surface? What is V sub R for a sphere? I mean, yeah, for a sphere. It's KQ over R squared. So put that in and then combine all the like terms. And then combine these two. No, sorry, uh, potential at the surface is kq over r, not r squared. Uh, it's kq over r. And now add this to that. They're, they're like terms. It's going to be 2, 2, that's going to be 3 over 2r. We get a weird looking formula here. It's not as simple as you would think it would come out. Uh, the potential of an insulating sphere is going to be this weird looking thing. Let's see how would we graph it. At r equals to zero, at r equals to zero, what's going to be the potential? It's going to be uh, 3 halves kq over r, which is actually if you remember, kq over r is the potential at the surface. So if 3 halves kq over r means it's 1 and a half times the potential at the surface. So if this is uh, kq over r, 3 halves kq over r looks like somewhere about here. So 3 kq over 2r. And then until you get to r, and it decreases like this, minus kq over 2r r squared. So it's concave down. Right? If you take the second derivative of this, it's going to be a negative. Concave down like this. And then when you get to the surface, the potential is kq over r. Then after that, it goes this way, concave up, which is 1 over d. So over here, it decreases as r squared. Now here's the interesting thing. If you take an insulating sphere, And I put a little charge at the, little, at the center, little charge, little Q. So you take an insulating sphere, charge all over the place. I take a little Q, I put it at the center. What happens to that charge, the little Q? What's the electric field there? Well, go to the electric field graph. The electric field there is zero, right at the center. Okay? And the potential there is one and a half times the potential at the surface. So what happens to that charge? If I put it exactly at the center, it should be in a state called non-stable equilibrium. There's no force on it because the electric field is zero. But if you displace the charge a little bit, what happens? If someone displaces the charge a little bit, what happens? The electric field should push it out, OK? Because look, the electric field, if you displace it a little bit, the electric field has some value, right? It pushes it out. Now, 
in terms of potential, you can see why it's going gonna, it's gonna to move out. If you put the object here, what's going to happen? It's like putting a ball on the hill. If you displace the ball a little bit from the hill, it goes down the potential. So that's why it's a non-stable equilibrium. So this uh, ties into what we learned in physics one, right? So I'm trying to see, make sense of this graph from, for you, you see? If you put it anywhere else, it's also going to go down. Okay, how about if, we, you, uh, if I tell you, find the potential of an insulating sphere, non-uniform density. What would change? Non-uniform density, where rho sub r is equal to kappa r. I believe we also did that back in chapter 24. I solved for, uh, using Gauss's law, I solved for what is the electric field inside of an uh, insulating sphere for kappa r. And I think the answer we got is kq r squared over r to the fourth. It should always, if, if it's kappa r, it should always go up by one, and then uh, this one should also go up, because at the, at the surface, it should equal kq over r squared. Right? So then, if I ask you to do that, you would also uh, uh, go through the same steps, kq over r to the fourth, r squared, Let's see what would change here. This one will be r to the fourth. This one will be r cubed over three. This one's going to be r to the fourth. This one's going to be r cubed over three minus r. Uh, and then this one's going to be r to the fourth, r cubed over three. So this one's still going to be kq over r. This one's going to be kq r cubed over 3r to the fourth. Plus kq, and then this one's going to be uh, 3r. And then when I add that, so you're still going to get a similar looking answer. It's going to be 3 and 3, so that's going to be 4 thirds. 4 thirds kq over r minus kq over 3 r to the fourth. And then this is going to be r cubed. So I, I, I just sort of did it as I erased things to show you what would change. The graph would still look similar to this, except Instead of 3 halves, it's 4 thirds. So it would start somewhere here. It would be 4 thirds. 4 thirds is a little lower than 3 halves, right? So it would start a little bit here. Then it will go r cubed. It will look like this. So it's a little, it goes down a little bit. So if you put an object at the center and displace it a little bit, it's not going to go as fast. It goes a little bit less, uh, less faster. By the way, one thing I, didn't, I forgot to mention. When you get this answer, you should check to make sure whether you did it right. You should put little r is equal to big R. When what should it equal? If you put little r is big R here, big R cubed over big R to the fourth. R cubed over R to the fourth cancels, so you have uh, three R. And then you get what? KQ over R. So when you get to the center, it should always be KQ over R. Okay?